So, iOS versus Android, which one is for you? Have you tried the other? Do you know what you're missing? Today I'll explain how after 8 years of using iOS, I made the decision to switch to Android with the release of the Samsung Galaxy Tab S4. Before I start, know that I'm not a dedicated fan of a single OS. I'm certainly not saying one is worse than the other. My choice to switch is based entirely on personal preference and what works best for me. So with all of that out of the way, let's start the video, right after we shout out our Patreon supporters. For this month, we have Boxfish, Alexandi1 and Meme Addiction, so a huge shout out and thank you to them. Like I said, I've been using iOS on iPads for around 8 years now, so what persuaded me to switch? One thing you've most likely heard about Android is that it's much more customizable than iOS, and to be honest, I wasn't overly excited about this aspect. Sure, it would be nice, but I wasn't expecting it to be so important. Customization in Android is actually huge, and widgets are far more powerful than I was expecting, when used correctly. I mean, even if you don't actually use them, they really add a lot to your home screen and make it look nice. There's widgets for almost anything. Your calendar, contact, search, clock, weather, and of course custom widgets, which are available in the Google Play Store. One place where you are restricted more on the default Samsung launcher is on the dock. You can only have 6 apps placed on the dock at once, whereas on iOS you can have a lot more. Custom launchers are also very impressive. I've just decided to stick with the default Samsung Experience launcher, since most custom launchers don't work with tablets such as mine, they just aren't very optimised for big screens. Other customizations which I've tried but don't use regularly include custom icons, live wallpapers, and I'm sure there's a lot more on the Play Store. I just use the simple customizations really, but there's many more to choose from. One thing which I say iOS does better than Android is Notification Center and Control Center. Control Center is just so easy to access and has every major setting displayed on one page as well as a multitasking app switcher, whereas Android has a similar Control Center bar in the notification list, but I would definitely prefer if this took up the whole screen instead of just a small portion of the display. I mean, you can't use the content behind it when it's on screen, so I don't really see the point. Notification Center should only contain notifications if you ask me. Multitasking on Android is also not great in my opinion. I like how you can easily make two apps display at once using the button on the app preview window, but apps are just really hard to close. You have to slide quite far across the screen on Android, but on iOS, you can use a quick flick to toss the app away. The close all button is handy, which isn't featured on iOS. Switching apps is definitely slower on Android, simply because of the lack of the floating dock, which plays a huge role in saving your time in iOS. I'm really going to miss this dock, especially because of the free recent app shortcuts and the really smooth animations in Control Center and Notification Center. Speaking of animations, let's compare a few here. They're soft and smooth like I said, and they have a much more physical feel. Android animations are fast and are usually sharp. I found these animation settings under developer options, which lets you change the speed of the animations and animated UI effects. But these slow down the entire animation and leave some empty space after the animation finishes and really lacks optimization for general users iOS animations are just more enjoyable to look at, and it's the same with macOS vs Windows 10. Hands down, Apple makes the best UI animations. I can't really compare the home screen and lock screen UI, since they differ a lot depending on the launcher you're using, but the Samsung Experience launcher does the home screen right if you ask me. iOS simply doesn't have an app drawer, 
I kind of see the point in it, but you could just put your less used app on a second home menu page. I still don't know how I feel about the app drawers, but I like how you can disable it in the Samsung Experience Launcher, since I haven't found that option in any other launcher I've tried so far. Moving over to the hardware side of Android, it can become a lot more complicated. There are a lot of very poor quality Android phones and tablets out there, so it's important to do your research before buying. With Apple's iOS, you're pretty much guaranteed a good smooth experience on the newer iPhones and iPads. One place where iOS really lets me down is file management. The new files app which was introduced in iOS 11 is useful, but is seriously restrictive and feels very strange compared to the usual desktop file experience. Android can read microSD cards and transferring files around is simple, whether it be to a cloud service, media card, NAS or internal storage. The price jump from the 64GB iPhone X to the 256GB model is $150, but to buy a 256GB microSD card will cost you just $70, and to jump to a massive 400GB microSD card is just $150. So, if you really need a lot of local storage, Android is certainly the way to go. Overall, I prefer Android now as my primary mobile OS, mainly because most of the apps I use are in Google's G Suite and work better with the Android OS which is made by Google. Half of the apps I use must be from Google, so Android does help me out more than iOS in this instance. Apps like LastPass work a lot better on Android because the OS is far less restrictive. Android allows LastPass to display a pop-up in any app, which lets you easily insert your email and password without having to leave the current app. A lot of people say that Android is less stable than iOS, but I haven't really experienced anything that would make me agree with that just yet. I can see that apps are generally of a lower quality on Android than on iOS, but that's more of an issue with the developer, it's still something to keep in mind if you are thinking about switching. So, I hope you enjoyed this slightly different video. Usually we do Nintendo modding videos, but if you want to see more Android or iOS videos, make sure to vote in the poll which appeared at the start of this video. Just click the I in the top right corner. Well, that's all for today. My name's Jack Sorrell, and I'll see you next Sunday with a brand new video.